Hi, Rick Osman here. Today, Thursday, June the 7th, 2012, Brenda Myers and I caught up with this gentleman. His name is Jamie Summerlin. We caught up with him at his mile marker 2607 in Montgomery, Indiana at the Ruritan Park Campground. Jamie is out crossing the country, literally from coast to coast, to promote the Wounded Warrior Project. The reason we caught up with him to ask him about it is the strange way in which he's crossing the country. At least it's strange for most of us. You see, his dedication and his effort has driven him to run entirely across the country. Today he was in Montgomery. Yesterday he was in Lawrenceville, running 37 miles a day with 2,607 covered and 745 to go. His family's with him in the RV. Please listen as Jamie tells us why he's doing this. Really an opportunity to just thank all of our veterans, you know, and not just our wounded that are coming home, but, you know, I, you see on Facebook, you know, I post the memorial pictures, you know, whenever I come to the towns and stuff, I love seeing those. Uh, it's just an opportunity to, to honor and thank those that have sacrificed everything as well as those that are, you know, still serving and doing what we are called to do. So, so oh, it's, it's quite an effort. It's, uh, it's, it's tiring. It's, it's been uh, challenging. It's the toughest thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. What was your starting point? Coos Bay, Oregon. Actually, Sunset Bay in Coos County. So, I had my feet in the Close Pacific Ocean. Stories. Uh, actually, south. We south. Were, yeah, we were south, south, south western, well, southern coast. Um, How do you spell Coos? C O O S. Coos County. Uh, Sunset Bay is where we started at. And uh, that was March 26th. 74 days ago, 2,600 miles ago. So you're in the last third today. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, tomorrow is three quarters of the way. Tomorrow's day 75. So, yeah, 25 days, as of today, 26 days left. So, uh, less than 800, well, right at 800 miles to go. So, where's your stopping point? Annapolis, Maryland, at the Naval Academy. So, are you taking generally US 50? Once, once we got down into Illinois and came in we, that's where we started hitting 50 because um, uh, of course we were northern you know sure. we were coming across typically the path that uh, typically the path that's taken is this more southern route you know, anybody that's I mean, there's been less than 300 people actually about 250 people that have ever ran across America um, you think I pick a smaller country um, <laughs> But uh, they usually take a southern route from LA or you know Southern California because it's a lot shorter. Um, coming from the Pacific Northwest, I added about four to five hundred miles to the average distance that people take. So of course we went through in Oregon. You know, I hit it was 80 degrees the day we took off. Uh, two days later, it's pouring the rain down on me. Uh, on day five, um, just absolutely drenched from the rain for the whole 40 miles. Day six snow drifts over top of the RV. I mean, it was, you know, a blizzard. I couldn't see a quarter mile in front of me. So, I mean, that was just the first five days. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's, it's been everything in between since then. And uh, just keep plowing through. I mean, you know, I can't stop. There's no break days. It was 100 straight days, averaging 34 miles a day. Um, I wanted to, for my own personal, you know, I mean, there's definitely a selfish piece behind this. I love pushing my body, seeing how far I can go. I mean, that's why I do ultra marathons. I mean, it's, I'm never going to get out and win these races that I do up to the 100 mile races. Um, but for ultra runners, it's not about a lot of us anyways. It's not about winning the race. It's, right. it's us against the trail, you know. Or against yourself. Yeah, and, and just being able to push ourselves and seeing what we're made of. Kind of an aside, you ever heard of Dan Cable? Yes. You're in his neighborhood. Really? Yes. Huh. The naval base that's 20 miles that way. Okay. That's where he worked. <laughs> really? Since he retired from active duty. Very interesting. I did not know that. Very cool. Dan's a good guy. Yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, I, you know, where we started at in Coos County, uh, in Coos Bay, very close town, Marshfield, which is where Prefontaine was from. Mm -hmm. and so we got to, when we left, uh, just prior to leaving, I uh, go into Coos Bay and they had a pre um, art gallery exhibit set up with all of his trophies and everything. And, you know, of course, it's being where my wife is from and uh, her family is all from there. It was, you know, we wanted to start there because of her family. I, uh, you know, pay a little homage to Pre as well. But, uh, yeah, so it's, it's been interesting to hit some of the areas and find other runners and, you know, right. other people that. If I'd had more time, I'd have tried to roust Dan down that, here. That would have been great, yeah. 
oh well, you know. It's, uh, um, one of the things that I've shared with a lot of people on this run, especially, I, mean, I talked this morning to a friend of mine back home on a radio station, and, you know, I'm 74 days into this. Yeah, this is kind of extreme as far as, you know, I don't advocate people go out and run across America, you know, I mean, it's not something just normal people do, um, but I'm just a regular guy trying to do something extraordinary for people I consider way more extraordinary than myself, you know, I mean, they're my heroes. And so I try not to get this focus on me, you know, I try to get it on the men and women that I'm doing this for. Well, speaking so. of that, what kind of sponsorship do you have? Uh, a lot of it came from mom and pops, the small community-based, you know, organizations back home in West Virginia. We went after the national, you know, uh, running organizations, uh, companies, you know, sent sponsorship proposals. I thought, boom, you know, I mean, this is great. Our veterans, you know, want to get it behind and support it. We either got letters of declination, we got no responses, you know, it was, um, I'm, again, I'm just a regular guy. I don't have the big companies right. behind me. Um, and so I'm sure there's some hesitation for some of the companies. Is he really going to do this? You know, I mean, very few people have ever done it, you know, all that. Um, but it really came down to the local companies in West Virginia, as well as a few other companies, you know, Gold Bond and some others that sent lotion and things. I mean, a majority of the sponsorships that I received were product support. Um, it wasn't really financial support, you know. And, um, so we've had a couple of organizations, a couple of individuals that have helped us, you know, as far as operational costs are concerned. Um, but you know, a lot of this is out of pocket. I mean, it's you know, it's it's what we're, you know, it, it was something I was passionate about. I mean, I'm, I'm very passionate about running, but I'm more passionate about my veterans, and it's something that I felt was necessary for me to do, and you know, whatever cost. I mean, within reason, obviously. So it's a uh, commitment. It, it, it's been a commitment for all of them. I mean, it's a sacrifice. Right. Um, and as, and as a Marine, mm -hmm. and notice I didn't say former right, or right. any of that, yeah. you're still probably ready reserve. Yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's it, we're called to do whatever, whenever, you know. And um, for my family, you know, I mean, it's been a tr tremendous sacrifice for them. My wife is a Marine Corps veteran as well. Um, my kids have been with me. My mom was with me the first month. My mother-in-law was with us the second month. Um, everybody sacrificed, you know, and I couldn't do it without them. I mean, there's my wife has been my logistics person, my sports psychologist, my physical therapist, my nutritionist. I mean, she's been everything, you know, on this trip. There's no way I could do it without her. I mean, it's a team effort. Same with us in the military. Yeah, it takes a team to be able to do the That's things. That's where I was going to go with that. Yeah. Most people don't realize how hard it is on spouses and dependents to have even one member on that team. Absolutely. Level of two. Right. Yeah. I'm uh, acquainted with, he's now retired, but he was a senior chief in the Navy with four kids at home. And most people don't realize that in a lot of cases they can qualify for food stamps. Sure, absolutely. The pay is not great. Sometimes the work isn't very rewarded. Other times it's absolutely exhilarating. Right. It's like fighter pilots training for 30,000 hours for that 30 seconds of absolute terror. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that kind of relates to talking with a couple of sports psychologists, students, doctor students at West Virginia University that I worked with prior to taking off on this trip. About two weeks before I left, I was out on the training run one morning and I was getting back to the house and I really had this heavy feeling of depression come over me about the fact that I've been training for two years for all of this and it's going to be over in 100 days, you know, and, and then what? And so I was explaining to them that feeling and they said, you know, it's normal. You know, Olympic athletes go through it all the time. They train for four straight years for something that could last 10 seconds or a minute, you know, or, or you know, however long it is. And then it's kind of like a postpartum depression. Now what do I do? Yeah. You know, where do I go? Uh, embrace every day, you know, take one day at a time and, uh, and make the most of it. And then when you're done, use that as a springboard to bigger and greater things. So and we had an opportunity to talk to, um, but, uh, in Roseburg in Oregon I got a chance to stop the VA and talk to some of the veterans there and spent about an hour with them explaining to them what I was doing you know and, and how much you know it meant to me to be able to get out and honor them and thank them for everything and uh, they gave me a lot of feedback you know and, and uh, you know one of the guys asked me he says are you looking forward to you know when you get to West Virginia and get to the finish and I said you know I'm, I, I'll let tomorrow worry about tomorrow you know I need to get through today and he said that's what we do you know I mean we go one day at a time we, 
grateful to wake up. We're grateful to go to sleep at night, you know, and hope we wake up the next morning ready to tackle the day. And we got some feedback from some of the folks after we had left, and it was, it, you know, I, I use a lot of things that motivate me to get people pushed through some days. Some days are tougher than others. Some days are wonderful, you know, and I float through it. Um, but one of the guys that I talked to for a little while there had made a comment um, after we had left that got back to us, and he said, you know, it's the first time that I felt like someone cared about us outside of these walls. Wow. And that in and of itself made my whole trip. I mean, you know, just being able to do that and get that feedback from them to know that we're making an impact that, that people do care about and, and want to see them helped and supported and encouraged. Um, that's what this is all about. You know, I mean, we can raise great money for some great organizations. I mean, the VA does a great job, you know, we know that, um, but there are gaps that need to be filled. I mean, I wish these organizations I was raising money for didn't have to exist, but they do because there are those gaps. And so we're out here raising money for those organizations, you know, to help them support our vets. But, you know, it, it's, for me, it, the pain's temporary that I go through. You know, I mean, this is 100 days. You know, today my knee's bothering me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm aching. You know, I've got my head's pounding. It's hot. But it's going to be over, you know. These men and women that I'm doing this for, they're going to suffer with these things for the rest of their lives, whether it's loss of limbs, PTSD issues, you know, whatever. They're going to have that for the rest of their lives. So this is nothing for me to go through right now, you know, and it's, every step's worth it, you know, because of people like that, you know, knowing sure. that they are – accepting what we're doing as a way to honor them and thank them, you know, it, it, it makes it worth it for me every step I take. Well, any messages for the residents of Davies, Knox, Martin, where else? No, Pike County, Pike. Gibson County, Lawrence County, Illinois, which you came through? Well, um, you know, obviously, you know, we're trying to raise awareness for our wounded veterans coming home, trying to help these organizations out. You know, we, we partnered with the 501c3 back home. Uh, to handle all the finances, so you know all donations are 100% tax deductible that comes in. People can be assured that the money's going, you know, where it says it goes or where we're saying it's going. Um, auditors and all that stuff are overseeing it, um, so we want to make sure people understand that, you know, because I want I want to feel good at the end of the day about what we're doing, and, and people that donate, you know, their hard-earned money, especially in this economy, um, that they know it's it's being put to you know the, the proper use. Um, but for all veterans, you know, I've shared this numerous times. Um, thank them. It takes very little to make a vet's day. I know for me, when I was in the military, for someone to thank me when they saw me in uniform or if I was at home and they just thanked me for my service, um, it made my day. I mean, it, it made it all worth it. Uh, when I come through towns and, and I go by a National Guard facility or a recruiting station, I've made every effort I can to go in introduce myself, they don't know me from Adam, but I give them one of my cards, tell them what I'm doing, and I say, look, I'm just here to thank you. I appreciate your service, appreciate what you're doing, you know, and, and we support you, I want you to know that, you know, and you could see it just change their outlook, you know, I mean, their appearance that, you know, whenever you're talking to them. But as far as, you know, making a vet's day and helping a vet out, you know, one of the things that I've shared is it's very simple. Buy a vet a beer, lend them your ear for an hour, you'd be amazed at what a handshake and a thank you would do for a vet. It's very simple, um, and and you'll have a friend for life. You'll have somebody that would be there at your side no matter what. Because one of the cool things about this trip, I've got Marines, and you know, I've been out for 15 years. I've got Marines that I haven't seen in 15 years that have joined me at the fin or at the start of this run. Uh, last weekend, at Memorial Day, or a couple weeks ago, I had Marines drive up from Texas wow. to be with me that day and run with me. Um, I've got Marines that are on the East Coast that are coming out from New York and in D.C. that will be there to, to be there to finish with me. Um, the camaraderie and the relationships that we have, it's, it's been great to rekindle them, you know, together. Um, and we've always stayed in touch, but um, that's something that we'll hold dear for the rest of our lives. We're friends for life, you know, and, and uh, it, it doesn't take much, you know. Um, just let them know you appreciate them. This, this kind of an aside, not really part of the interview, but sure. a friend of mine who's 100% Mm -hmm. and is going to school on VA nickel. Right. The, one of the two they had to rub together. Sure. So, uh, he and I are kind of partnering up trying to develop a television show mm -hmm. uh, that's part real world difficulties mm -hmm. of veterans and then part what's your best war story. And it's amazing how many war stories you can get through the price of the beer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, it doesn't take much. And uh, uh, even even if they're, you know, 
the worst thing that they ever went through or just talking about a friend that they had, you know, that, they, that they've held dear to them forever. Yep. Um, it, it's, it's great. And everybody's got at least one friend. Absolutely. Well, you know, and, um, my wife, she's got friends that uh, uh, you know, she stayed in contact with, and this has been an opportunity for us to get in touch with some of them as well. So. Do, you, do you all have a, like a Facebook page or anything? Yeah, at the website at uh, runforwwp.com, there's direct links to Facebook and Twitter. Um, we've uh, tried to make it as simple as possible for people to you know, follow us along. I actually have a live tracker I carry with me, a company up in Connecticut, My Athlete Live, donated it. Um, cool. They believed in what I was doing, and they said we want to have as many people following you and being able to be a part of it. Um, so they sent it to me, and uh, you go to the website, and every page has a Track Me Live link. You click it, and it brings up a map that you can go to, and it, every 10 seconds it updates you with my status of where I'm at, and you can follow me all the way across the country. So it makes it interactive for people. I mean, like I said, this has grown from just, you know, again, obviously the focus on our wounded veterans and stuff, but, you know, with my kids being with us, what an educational opportunity it's been for them, you know, to be able to experience this and uh, see the country five miles an hour, one mile at a time. I mean, you know, kind of like our frontiersmen did it a little bit faster than they did, actually. And in comfort. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, their schools have been keeping track of it. We've got schools back in West Virginia and I found out about other schools around the country that were following this. and. They do like a Where's Jamie Tuesday, you know, and find wow. out what state I was in, and uh, then they'd learn about the geography of the state, you know, the capital and all that stuff. And so it's been a great educational experience, you know, for other classes, you know, and other you know, other kids to be able to be a part of. At this of, point, so. I'm sorry I got in on it late. Well, that's okay, you know. I mean, it's uh, it's like it's funny, I, you know. People have asked about sponsorships, you know, and, and there's a, a radio station back home that every week we talk twice a week and. Uh, they keep plugging, you know, the sponsors, get on board, you know, get, be a part of this. And I said, look, you know, even if it gets to the last day, uh, this job still isn't done, you know. Sponsors can get on board all the way through. If you want to jump on the bandwagon at the last minute, it's perfectly fine with me because it all goes in the end to help our veterans out, you know, and support them. And, you know, so that's what we're looking forward to doing. And anybody can be a part of it at any time. And like I said, this is just the beginning, my hope is anyways, that it's a springboard for other greater things. And, you well, know. hopefully we can stay in contact. And Absolutely. Get better support for the next time you do this. Or, next time or I'm plant, whatever you do that. Next time I'm planting my rear end on a bike. Hopefully <laughs> one with a, with a motor in it and uh, you know making its way. So and you do that, and you'll have a lot of people with you. Well, yeah, it, that's been some of the coolest parts. Is you know we've had communities that have come out and gotten involved. Uh, in Klamath Falls, we had a running club that for about two months prior to us getting there did a bunch of fundraisers and you know getting the word out. And then the Rip City Riders Motorcycle Club locally, they, they got involved. They started raising some money. And then when we went through Klamath Falls, the Lopers, the running club, they ran with me. And we had motorcycle escorts at the front and back all the way through. Came into Imperial, Nebraska. Stopped in. This is a great story. Came in. You know, of course, we mapped this whole trip out, you know, day one through 100. And what we did was we marked intersections, you know, for some of our start and stop points of the day. We didn't know what was there. It was just, okay, this looks like a good stop point, and we'll find a place to stay. We came in about 15 miles shy of Imperial, and at the intersection, there was a silo and a big, long building, you know, looked run down and everything, but there was a truck there that I'd noticed had passed me a little while prior to that. <clears throat> I went up. Nobody was inside. There was a four-wheeler tra uh, track on the back of the truck that was gone, so... Um, I said, well, we'll just park here in the lot, you know, and wait. About a half hour later, the four-wheeler comes back, and it's a young kid, you know, in a four-wheeler. And um, I explained to him what we were doing and, and said, you know, I mean, if we could just even boondock here at the, you know, the night in your lot, you know, that'd be great. And he said, well, let me call my dad. So his dad came down about a half hour later, explained to him what we were doing. He's like, actually, here, here's power. You can plug in, you know, if you need to dump. I've got a little sewer thing over here you can dump in as well. I said, okay, appreciate it, you know. Then his son came back a little bit later and took me and the kids off and took us to a farm where a buddy of his had horses that let the kids ride, you wow. know, and so, so it was a good experience, you know, to be able to get outside. Well, next morning I take off running. I get about 10 miles into my run, five miles outside of Imperial, and a truck pulls up in front of me, stops, and out jumps the mayor of Imperial. And it's only a couple thousand people, small town, you know. And, and uh, he comes up to me and he says, one of my council members said that you stayed in his lot last night and uh, said you were running right through Imperial. I wanted to come out, you know, introduce myself and, uh, you know, we've only got an hour or so, but I'm going to see if I can put something together for you by the time you get to town. Okay. I get five miles down the road. I come around a turn. A couple of high school cross-country runners come out to meet me. And as we make our way around a turn, 
Uh, lined up is the police chief with his car. There's a fire truck with the firemen in it, um, motorcycles, and then other runners that joined us. And we had a little mini parade on Mother's Day through downtown Imperial, you know. And of course, it's Sunday morning. And it, by the time I got through there, it's about 11 o'clock and 11:30. Church is letting out. Well, people were coming out and pulling over and hopping out and applauding, you know, and encouraging us. And the kids got to ride in the fire truck. I mean, it was it was a great experience. That is the community aspect of this that we've embraced and, and enjoyed the most. I mean, it's again going back to the sponsors. You know, we didn't have the big national sponsors, right. but we had the small companies that came out. You know, to be a part of this. The same way with the, the communities. You know, some of the bigger cities, we've had some great responses from TV stations and radio. Others, you know, just never even bothered to come out. Right. But man, the small communities, they embrace it. They love it. You know, they come out. They want to be a part of it. They put it in the paper. Um, you know, and then they, they're like, you know, wish you'd have got a hold of us beforehand, you know. I mean, there's only so much we can do, but um, but that's been the great part about this trip is the kids seeing that, you know, and us feeling that warmth, you know, from the communities and people being wanting to be a part of it because they believe in what we're doing. You know, yes. they buy into it because they understand it's for a greater cause. It's They're not out there, you know, for me, they're out there knowing that I'm just a vehicle for our vets, you know, and, and these organizations that are supporting them. So it's just little things like that that'll stick with me forever you know because it's and it's you know absolutely yeah. um very good friend of mine uh he comes from an indian tribe in south dakota and he had told me beforehand he said uh one of the things that was always passed down from the elders was you want to make an impact that will be four generations deep so basically you want to be able to do something that your grandkids will tell their kids about and he said, what you're embarking on right now will be a story that your grandkids will be more than happy to share with those kids, you know. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. The more I've thought about that, you know, and I realized the scope of this and what we've accomplished so far, I mean, we wanted to raise a half million dollars. We're nowhere near that, but the awareness that we've raised and the, the you know, the, the encouragement and the, the people that have wrapped their arms around the veteran community because of what we've done, uh, that's enough for me to know that we've done a good job you know, so. well if you get to Maryland and you decide that you want to run back home you let me know will you? well I will I appreciate it thank you very much help get that awareness out. well thank you I, I do appreciate it so. and I thank you well we, not, uh, not just for your service with this but for your service in the Marine Corps as well as your wife and I think that's probably the most important message here yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's uh, we all we all have a job to do. You know, whether it's in the military, it's out of the military. You know, uh, we go about our jobs and do them the, the way that we've been trained and, and we're you know we're expected to do. For for me, my job right now is to honor these veterans. You know, that are coming home and let my kids see us doing that in a great way so that in turn they'll be able to do it whenever they grow up. Whether they're in the military or not, their job will be to make sure they always honor and respect our veterans because there are a lot of ways to support even if it's not in a uniform. Oh absolutely. You know we're uh, you know we have Veterans Day parades and stuff at home and or, or an event going on. We're down there with the kids. Very few other kids are there with the parents and stuff, but we want to make sure that our kids respect and honor again whether they're in the military or not. You know, that they always thank those that have sacrificed and a lot of times everything for you know, what we're able to do. So, yeah, so, yeah no, I appreciate you guys coming out. I, I was privileged enough to know two former POWs when I was growing up from World War II. Right. And uh, they taught me a lot. Yeah. Not by, you know, words so much, but by deep. Sure. Yeah. So we're just good men. Absolutely. Well, it's uh, the, I guess the, it's hard to keep with. the idea of this run and, and what it's done so far and, and the scope of it and everything, for me, still hasn't sunk in. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I get up in the morning, I go run, you know, we take our opportunities to speak to people, you know, and um, recognize the communities that are, you know, supporting their vets with the memorials and things like that. Um, but it's, it's just a routine for me right now. When we're done with this, you know, and I get a chance to kind of take a look you know, back at what we've done so far and what we can use that to do other greater things sure. with, um, that's what I'm really looking forward to, you know, is, is seeing where this can go. And, and hopefully we've, we've changed some people's lives along the way, you know, and opened their eyes up to the veteran community a lot more.
I certainly hope so too. Yeah. I hope in some small way we can help with that. Well, I appreciate it. After after this is over and people still want to support in some way, I mean, you know, they can, right? I mean, this doesn't stop with you in the run, so they can continue to go to your website and, and be directed to, yep. to contribute yep. in whatever. Absolutely. One of the things that we want to do when this run is all done, um, and we've already worked with an organization back home to get this process started, uh, we're going to write a book about the journey. You know, it, it's not just about my run, but telling the warrior stories as well. The people that we've had a chance to meet, the communities that we saw. You know, that's why we, we try to journal everything every day. You know, and pick up all the things that we can do. And you know, so when that's done. Um, and we have the book out, you know, because it impacts a lot of different, you know, communities. I mean, it's just not just the ultra running community or the veteran community, but, you know, um, it, it, there's a lot of people that it will touch, you know. Uh, part of those proceeds that we're doing with the book will turn around and go back to these veterans organizations as well. And that's, that was all structured when we put this together. So you know, we, we don't want it to stop. We want it to continue to grow. So. A lot of a lot of endeavors like this nowadays are accompanied by a video crew the entire way. Yeah, you know, it was one of those things where, again, I didn't have the budget, you know, yeah. I didn't have, you know, the, the right. big companies behind me, and, you know, and, and in a lot of ways, that was okay, because having read a couple of people that have done the cross-country run, um, that had video crews with them, uh, they were directed in which way to go and when and all this. This has been at our own pace. I mean, I had set schedules of where I needed to be, but there were days, you know, in the beginning, I got injured uh, on my climb to Diamond Lake five days into the run. Uh, my left shin, I really messed it up on it because it was a 40 mile day, well, 39 miles, and the last 25 miles was a 4,000 foot elevation gain. So it was straight up the mountain. Well, I don't have anything like that in West Virginia. It's 4,800 feet is my highest point, but I don't have anything like that to simulate that in West right. Virginia. So I climbed it, and I mean, I went after it, and the next day, my left shin was bothering me pretty bad. Um, the day after, I could barely walk on it, but Squints. yeah, and well, it was, it had swollen up. I mean, it, it wasn't like twice as big, but the front of it, it really stiffened up, and so I walked on it a couple of days, and the problem was that as I was walking, I wasn't bending my ankle, and so it, it stiffened up and got worse and worse, and about the third day, um, I, I mean, I, I had walking sticks out. I was just mustering through what I could, um, but there was no running. I mean, it was, you know, we just get through it as best we can. Fourth day, I said, look, I've got to do something, you know. I got in the back of the RV and my wife grabbed my ankle. And because I hadn't bent my ankle in like four days, the adhesions from where the muscle had started to repair itself, right. I, it, 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 they started growing back together. And when she stretched my ankle out and ran her hand down it, felt like Rice Krispies. I mean, you could hear it popping even from those adhesions breaking in there. I screamed. I mean, it was the most painful thing I'd ever had. The next day I get out and my kids have ran with me, you know, they joined me on, you know, parts that we got to run through the salt flats together. I mean, it was just some really cool stuff. Um, but my son, I was, I had a 35 mile day and I was walking these out. I mean, it took my six to eight hour days to 11, 12, 13 hour days. And it was, it was tough on all of us. Um, but my, I, got, I did walk my first 20 miles. And then my son got out and walked three miles with me and he got back in the RV and you know he was talking to me before we got in and he's like you know I just never thought my dad would ever run across America you know I mean this is really cool and he got back in the RV and I said you know if I'm going to do this I need to just I need to go and so I started jogging out those last 12 miles and this was the day after she had you know wrenched on my ankle and then the next day got up and started running and I've been running ever since you know so uh, you know, again, it's it's. There's been pain. There's been suffering, and and I've tried to use that as a way for people to also understand. Because I've I've been very open on my blog about you know when I've had shin problems or pains in my knee or whatever, uh, because I want people to see it's real. You know, and same way with our vets. I mean, they go through these things every day. You know, and and there's no need to hide it. You know, just be open about it. You know, and get the help and you know do what we can. But uh, it's been it's been challenging. You know? I don't it's, doubt that at all. So. But here we are, 74 days in, 26 days to go, less than 800 miles, you know, right at 800 miles. And that was funny, I was talking to a friend of mine last week, I said, I'm at 1,000 miles to go, and I feel great, and he's he's laughing, and I'm like, why are you laughing? He said, it sounds funny, you being excited about 1,000 miles to go in the next 30 days, and I said, well, it sounds a lot better than 2,000 or 3,000, so. Yeah.